Mm -mm. All right. Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. And we are reading from Psalms 73. All right. Sometimes life gets tough, y'all. Sometimes it's, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's more than a notion. Trying to navigate through this maze called life. Challenges, trials, as some people love to use the word tribulation. Whatever the case is, we have challenges and we have to go through them. Thank God we don't get, we don't succumb to them but we do rise above them and go through. Now listen, I'm reading from uh, Psalm 73, starting at verse one. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Don't we deal with that sometimes? How come they get away with crap and we got to be accountable for everything? But they're the ones that get rich, right? Verse three. For, yeah, I already read that. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish right? They could take the trips. They get the $50, the $50,000 bonuses. They get to travel. They get to do all they want to do while they rake in the almighty dollar at society's expense. All right. I'm talking about the wretched ones, not the good ones. Verse 24, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Verse 25, and I'm done. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Now, what I want to, uh, I got to read the last line, verse 28. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all thy works. You know, one of the things I wanted to, to show you real quick. One of the things the Lord led me to do about a year and a half ago, and it has made all the difference. That's what's good about leaning on God and receiving his counsel. I have no problem walking. I have no problem standing. I don't have to be in a wheelchair. I don't have to be on crutches or walk with a walker. But when, just to share this, I'm sharing a little background so you get where I'm going on this. Sometimes we got to lean harder in different times of our lives. And we want to make sure that what we're leaning on can get us through. So listen to this. When I was a little baby, I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And as a result, uh, I had to wear orthopedic shoes all through elementary school. And yes, I was made fun of for that too. But the reason was, I have no arches. I'm still praying that God works a miracle in these bad boys down here that I stand on every day. <laughs> but I have no arches. So when I walk, I notice a lot of people who have a slight case of cerebral palsy tend to lean forward when they walk. And I do too. But I was very athletic. It didn't stop me at all. And I was always fine walking. I had no problem, but I noticed I lean a lot. So what the Lord led, led me to do about a year and a half ago, it was so bizarre because my mind wasn't even on it, but he started plaguing my mind with the, with the um, idea of using canes to lean on, walking canes. And what I want to show you is when you lean on something, this cane right here is stainless steel and it's got a rubber bottom so it doesn't slip out from under you. And I noticed as I was looking for canes online, I'm making a point, don't go anywhere. As I was looking for canes online, I felt led to buy two, not just one. So what I did was 
you know, let's say I'm going somewhere real nice and fancy. I bought myself a black cane with a little rhinestone head. But when I really need to, you know, get some walking done, I got these steel canes, baby. And I can put all my weight on these. And what's beautiful is I notice, check this out. I'm making a point. This is an analogy. When I walk with these canes, I am nowhere near as tired as I am when I don't walk with canes. And I had no idea how much more stamina I had when my whole body was depending on these canes for leverage. Leverage makes all the difference in the world. Why not let God be your leverage? And just as an aside, for those of you who are too proud to walk with canes and you end up falling and breaking hips because you have a bad case of a lack of balance, I, I beg you to get some canes. It really is safer and it makes all the difference in the world. Now, that's the way we need to lean on God. And I'm going to demonstrate real quick. I'm doing this for a reason because we have to learn to lean on God for everything. That's the point. So here I am walking, right? I walk, I walk, I walk. Now, I can walk without these. That's not a problem. But it's safer to lean. And some of us are too proud to lean on anything, let alone God. The one thing I want you to think about is when you lean on God, number one, he's not going to break. You are not too heavy for him. And a lot of times because you're grown and you've been taught to use your nugget up here to think for yourself, to do for yourself. Some of you are so independent, you forget to lean on God for the simplest things. And you wonder why some things end up being harder than they need to be. But there when Jesus said, come unto him, I don't mean labor and heavy laden, but he wants us to come unto him as little children. Little children are quick to grab mommy or daddy's hand. Little children are quick to run and jump on mommy or daddy's lap. Little children are quick to run to mommy and daddy crying and, and wanting them to pick them up so they can cry in, on their shoulder. Kids are notorious for that. But why are we not that way with God? Why do we not run to God? Because we think we got it all together. We're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. I'm grown. You're grown. I don't need all that. I'm an adult. But guess what? That's not what God wants you to be. He wants you to be grown in the spirit, but he wants you to be a child at heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, that doesn't mean childish. It's a big difference. But he wants you to be a child at heart because he wants you to learn to lean on his everlasting arms. He wants you to learn to depend on him at every turn. Every turn, y'all. You can depend on him during a conflict. You can depend on him on your job. You can depend on him in the parking lot, at the grocery store, at the warehouse. You can depend on him while you're doing a project. You can depend on him while you're playing a sport. You can depend on him while you're hurting. You can depend on him when you are in a quandary and you don't know what the heck to do. You can depend on his guidance. Lean on him for everything everything to expand your mental capacity lean on him he will carry you through there's a song that says he's like a shepherd he'll carry the young lambs in his bosom see sometimes we get so grown that we forget to learn how to lean i knew a lady she was a beautiful pastor, beautiful preacher. I mean, this woman was a powerhouse when it came to preaching. But guess what? She was in her 90s. 
and she was in the park walking up a grade. And there were young men right there, right within ear reach. And instead of her calling on the young man to help her get out of the car and walk her up the hill, she walked up on her own because after all, she's healthy. She's grown. She knows how to handle this. What happened? She falls and broke her hip. And when she broke her hip, she spent a year in and out of that bed, in and out of the hospital. And in a year and a half, she died from pneumonia from being in the bed so much. Now, this woman was in her 90s. You could tell she was going to live well into her hundreds. <coughs> she was preaching. She was a powerhouse. She leaned on God for everything else. But there are times, there are times when you have to say, okay, Lord, I'm reaching a different stage in my life. What do I do now? And see, the best thing you can do with God, the best thing is bombard him with your questions. That's what you do. Bombard him with your questions. And he will guide you. Just like the word said, he will guide you. Psalms 32. Psalms 32 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. And what does God say? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. That's not just your destiny and your future. That's in this very hour. I will guide thee by mine eye. Be ye not as a horse or a mule. In other words, don't be stubborn which have no understanding. Listen, a lot of times you don't realize that God, he wants us to lean on him. Now, people, we get tired of having somebody lean on us all the time. We get tired because we're human. We're trying to lean on ourselves, let alone somebody else's weight. But God, that's, that's his makeup. That's what he does. That's his M.O. Modus operandi. That's what he does. And you have to learn that God is a friend. He sticks closer than a brother. Some of you are trying to handle stuff that you should have your hands off. You're trying to handle things in your life that is too big for you, baby. It's too heavy for you. It's overwhelming for you. But you don't turn to God. And that's the thing you need to do. Because when you start asking God for help, if you don't even know what else to say, but help me, Lord, I'm, I'm lost in this thing. Ask God to help you, to guide you. Ask him to give you wisdom, discernment, understanding, insight, timing, a sense of his timing. Ask him to replace your desires with his desires so that when you want to do something, you know it's his will. It's, it's, it's something about leaning on God that makes life so much easier. You're not going through the day with guesswork. Okay, I'll do this. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, this is that problem. Oh, I need to do this. Sometimes that's a problem, but God may say, don't do anything. Leave that alone. H handle that on your right. On your right side, right there, I want you to deal with that. Ignore that on your left right now. 
And you're seeing that as a major crisis. And you're saying, well, Lord, but what if that, but what, what if they don't like how I have, but Lord, what, it doesn't matter. When you do what God says do, even if it goes against all the marbles in your head, it's going to turn out right if you do it God's way. But my question to you is, are you asking him? Are you asking or are you just making snap decisions at every moment, at every crisis, at every <clears throat> everything that rears its ugly head? You working it out your way? You working it out the way the, the job said to do it? Is that what you're doing? Years ago, Milton told me, he said, you have to get in the habit of, I mean, I mean Milton was wise, y'all. He said, you have to get in the habit of finding more than one approach to a problem. He said, you get out on the road and you only go one way all the time, one way all the time. He said, get in the habit when you got a little extra time. Explore the area and find out what other streets you can drive through to get there. Because if you ever run into a, a, a bus saw and there's a, a backup on the road and you can't go right or left, you can't go anywhere and you see it coming, you can make a turn and figure out how to get where you're going because you've explored the area. And you can find another route to get there. See, God will show you another route. He'll show you another method. But are you listening? Are you asking? Or are you depending on me, myself, and I? What are you depending on? Your experience? Your wisdom? What are you depending on? This is the way we always did it. This is the way my mama did it. My papa did it. My sister did it. My, my brother did it. Years ago, there was a story about a, a woman who baked the, the most delicious bread, uh, not bread, meatloaf. She, she baked this meatloaf and she learned from her mother and her mother from her mother. And it, it was just this, this, this generational re recipe. And every time she get ready to put it in the pot, after she shaped it beautifully and everything, she would cut the end off. And, and one day somebody asked her, why do you cut the end off? And she said, I don't know, but it's so delicious the way my mother did it. I do just what she did. So she said, ask your mother why she cuts the end off. So she asked her mother and she said, oh, she said, um, <laughs> she said, you better ask grandma. That's how I learned how to do it. That's the way we do it, right? That's what we do. So she calls grandma and grandma says, Oh, baby, my pan wasn't big enough, so I cut the end off. Now, that was something simple, but that tradition went down through the ages because nobody asked the question. She's wasting the meat that she could have eaten because grandma didn't have a pot big enough, so she cut the end off so it would fit in there. And they didn't even know it, so they just assumed, well, that's part of what made it taste good. So what I'm trying to share with you is when you consult with God, there is no waste. There is no waste of time. The, oh, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Listen to this. God will give you dreams and you need to pay attention to them. Years ago, when I first started doing hair and I got my license, my state license, I had a horrible dream. I mean, the thing almost made me cry. It stressed me out when I woke up, but it showed me how to pray. I dreamt that I was sitting in the living room doing a lady's hair. And while I was right in the middle of it, another lady's coming across the street with hair in hand, waiting to get her hair done. And while she's coming across the street, another customer's parking the car and they're coming to get their hair done. And I'm like, oh no, what do I do? I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Excuse me. I panicked and I woke up. So when I woke up, I said, Lord, what was that about? Why would I have such a horrible dream? And then as I thought about it, I said, okay, Lord, would you do me a favor? Listen to this prayer. Would you please make sure 
that even if I forgot to write an appointment down, that you would always have my back and make the customer that I overbooked cancel the appointment and come at a later hour or or the next day. So that even though I'm the one that's at, at fault, even though I'm the one that, that created the error, you cover me and make me look good. <laughs> so I look more professional than I really am. Please. I actually prayed that prayer. Do you know from day one to the day that I stopped doing hair to take care of my husband, do you know that there was, <laughs> there was one time I had, I had booked a customer and I forgot that I had told another one she could come because the day was empty at the time. And the lady called me up. Check this out. Call me up. These are prayers way in advance. And they were still working years down the road. She called me up and she said, Pat, please don't be mad at me, but I'm get, I'm really held up. Is it okay if I come at, uh, you know, it was like two or three hours later and I knew I'd be done with this customer. So I was like, oh, sure. No problem. Oh, thank you so much for understanding. And I hung up the phone and I said, Lord, you cover me every time. I mean, the stupid mistakes I did, God would, re he would rectify it. If I was running late because Milton had an accident or I, I got my time mixed up or whatever, I would say, Lord, let me get there before my customer, no matter what. And I'm telling you, I get to the shop and the customer who's normally punctual would call up and say, I got held up. Are you able to wait till another half an hour before I get there? Sure, no problem. <laughs> God, I mean, God will cover you. He will make you look good when you're at the bottom of your game. But are you leaning on him? See, these are the little ways we don't recognize that God intervenes in our lives. It's the craziest thing. Every time I have a friend who likes to come over from Highland Park, and every time she's on her way, if I need a little extra time, I'll say, okay, Lord, I need about 45 minutes, right? She'll call me up and say, okay, traffic's really bad. I'll be there in about an hour. Every single to this day, to this day. So just to let you know, God will cover you. There were times when I was driving, I was racing on the freeway. Asking God to help me not get a ticket to, to, you know, distract the officer, whoever might see me, but I need to get somewhere at a certain time. And sure enough, the Lord will have me look up. I'll get an alarm in my spirit and I'll just tap the brakes real light to slow down. And before I get to maybe a mile, there's a highway patrolman hiding in the corner in the back. And I'm looking at that saying, Lord, thank you for the warning. The little things. I mean, to this day, I have not had a, a, a driving, uh, 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 what do you call it, a ticket, a traffic violation. I have not had one since, let me see. I was competing in the tournament. And that year, oh, wow, that was back in the 80s. I haven't had a traffic violation since the 80s. But why? Because I asked God, warn me if there's a highway patrolman, if I'm rushing. Warn me if I need to do this or if I need to do that. Warn me if I don't need to go. Kill my desire to do this, that, or the other if I don't need to get involved with that. You've got to lean. I mean, put all your weight on God. He's not going to crack. He's not going to fold. He's not going to collapse out from under you. There is nothing that God cannot handle. There's a lot that you can't handle. And there's a lot that I can't handle. But God can handle it all. All at the same time. He's handling all of us at the same time. All of our challenges. You have to understand that God is mindful of you. He is for you, not against you. 
Now, here's another one. When a lot of you get mad at God when he doesn't come through and you pray the prayer. And I want to share this one with you. This just popped in my head. I almost forgot this ever happened. I was looking for a job. Uh, I was in between jobs and I was looking for a job. And every job I ever go to, this is my history. I go to a job from the first job coming out of high school. The first, the first job interview, I got hired. Every job I go to, I know I'm hired on the spot. But this one, I filled out the application. I did all I was supposed to do. And then they called me and said, sorry, Charlie. And I was like, why? Now, during the time a person walks in that I knew very well, a born again Christian. And they were saying, oh, you're going to work here? And I said, yeah. And they said, okay, put me down as a reference. So I put them down as a reference. That's what killed it. I had no idea that that person had a bad name with their job. That blacklisted me immediately. But what God let me know was that wasn't the job for me. The job he had for me was a few days down the road, just a few days. And I went to that job, got the job, got hired right on the spot because that was not the direction God wanted me to go in. See, even even when Satan is running interference, the thing you always say is, Lord, only thy will, whatever you got to do to get your will done, only thy will. And everything else that's outside of your will, I rebuke, I cancel, I cast out, I shut down, I destroy in the name of Jesus. And you can trust that even if Satan is in your way, God's using it for your good. Trust me on that. Trying to get this house. I couldn't get the house. I mean, I couldn't get, Milton and I were putting in all kinds of bids on houses up here. And every one snatched out from under by people with money with money, baby, cash in hand. We couldn't get our hands on a bicycle. We couldn't get our hands on a piece of dirt, let alone property. Because God did not want us there. He didn't want us there. He didn't want us over there. He wanted us here. And it wasn't until the, the, the real estate market went all the way down and then God tapped me on my shoulder and said, turn on your computer, I got something for you. And we got this instead of buying it at eighty four thousand or seventy four thousand, we got it for sixty eight. Do you hear what I'm saying? You have to understand that even God's nose are working out for your good. All things work together for your good to them that love God and are called according to His pur purpose. Read Romans eight. It, it all comes together for you. It culminates the positive and the negative. You have to understand it. One time when I was in prison, I'm sharing this so you learn that leaning on God means that he's going to do some questionable stuff. But if you trust him, you're not going to be rattled. You're not going to have your cage rattled at every given challenge, at every given crisis, because some of those crises are what God put in your way to stop you from going the wrong way at the wrong time or the right way at the wrong time. You hear me? All right. So listen, during this time I was doing prison ministry, I, I've been doing prison ministry for about it collectively for about 16 years. I love it. But during this time, the one obstacle that was always in my way was the chaplain, the head chaplain. And the head chaplain decided when I took off, one month. And I mean, I would go if I was up till one in the morning and they called and said, can you come in? One of the other people can't come. I was always Johnny on the spot, sick, healthy, fever. I was there with bells on my toes. Even if I was too sick to sit through a church service, I was in prison ministry. But what ended up happening was uh, I took a month off because Milton's mother had just passed away. And I just wanted to be there for him. And uh, she told me that she took me off the computer. So I was no longer in the system. So all my clearance, all that was gone, right? So I cried. I cried. And I went to church. And I, I, 
I went to church that 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 uh, morning, and this guest speaker was there, and his message was not for me, but his preliminary part of his message that was for me. I mean, it was for me. I was sitting there with tears, and Milton was trying to comfort me because he knew it really hurt my heart that she shut me out like that. And I was dabbing my eyes. I went through a lot of rejection, y'all. Y'all just don't know. <laughs> but anyway, thank God for healing. So what ended up happening was I'm sitting there with tears running down my eyes because I told the Lord, I'm going to fight. If I got to take it to court, I'm going to fight this thing. And God led me to scripture. And he said, no, you're not. You're going to be still and let it roll. But Lord, she's doing me wrong. Let it roll. But Lord, I need to, I mean, I need to do prison ministry. How could that be fair? Let it roll. Leave it alone. Hands off. Mouth shut. Be still and know that I am God. Those are the kind of scriptures I was getting. Because I always ask the Lord to lead me to scripture when I got a bunch of questions and things are getting on my nerves. So I'm feeling quite defeated. And I'm not happy with God's response, but I trust him. And as I'm sitting there, the preacher stands there and says uh, some trip he took and how God helped him avoid a horrible situation. And he said, God would not allow me to cross this line. It was something he needed to get done. And God blocked him at every turn and told him to be still, shut up. Sit down. I mean, almost identical to what God told me in scripture. And he said, sometimes God has another reason for you to take a break. Don't be hurt. Don't feel defeated. Don't be disheartened. But know that there are times you have got to back away and let things go and let them be. It's not making you look bad. Just let it be and trust that God has a reason. Yeah, you want to serve God. I mean, he was just talking right to me. Yeah, you want to serve God. But there are times when there's something else that's more important. And he wants you to tend to that. That right there gave me peace. Right there. I got my word. I could have gone home and gone to bed on that one. That right there. So what ended up happening, two years go by, two whole years of no prison ministry. Oh, my God. Right. I get a phone call. The person that was always blocking me is no longer the head chaplain. One of the other chaplains who knew me was there and they called me and said, you still want to do prison ministry? Yes. They said, don't worry about clearance. We got you covered. Just come on. Uh, uh, what Sunday would you like to come every month? And I told her, and I was in just like that, just like that. Why? God's timing. That's why I kept my mouth shut. And here's the other thing I had to ask the Lord for. I'm talking leaning, y'all leaning. I had to ask God to help me forgive that other chaplain that was rejecting me at every turn. Treat me like I had done something wrong to her. I'm serious. I didn't want to forgive her. I wanted to vindicate myself. God told me, hands off, mouth shut, be still, know that I'm God. Hmm. He handled it. She was out. Another one was in. They got me in. And even though she was still there, she wasn't, she didn't have any say so any longer. And when I stepped on the scene, she looked up, did a double take, like, what the heck are you doing here? And I said, hi, chaplain so-and-so, how you doing? And I didn't have any animosity in my heart. I was totally at peace. I didn't look at her at the corner of my eye like, hmm, yeah, how you like me now? Didn't have any of that going on. God totally helped me forgive her. See, when you go through life like that and things, sometimes your setbacks are set up. Sometimes a setback is a step aside and handle this over here. You don't need to worry about that. I got you covered on that. Give that a break for a minute and handle this. There are times when you will find God will take you to a point and then bam, slam the door in your face. 
Now this ends right now. And then later on, he'll open the door back up or he'll take you in a totally different direction. What did he do to the, the, uh, uh, the disciple that went to minister to the eunuch? He ministered the book of Isaiah and explained it to him. And then he baptized him. And as soon as he baptized him, what happens? He was taken up and translated somewhere else where he was needed. He, his job was done. See, some, some of you think you have to do something for the rest of your life. But God will move you here and then he'll move you there. And he'll move you, you know, don't be fickle and be like a little fly that, that lights on every little thing you see. You be led by God and you'll be all right. Long as you're led by God. And some of you stay too long and you don't know when the party's over because you're worried about getting everything you can. See, God knows how to supply your needs according to his riches and glory. But either way, you got to ask him big time. And don't go by your emotions. Don't go by your understanding. Don't go by the system because God may have a whole backup plan you never saw coming. And some backup plans you will never see until you let go and trust God. Lean on him totally, totally. When you can't see no way this can happen. If God says it's going to happen, you can lean, baby. You can put all your weight on that because God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. All right. So that was more of a practical word. I hope it did somebody some good. God bless you as you learn to lean. So here are three ways you can lean. Prayer. Cry your eyes out. That's number two. Number three, you get in that word and ask God to talk to you through that word. Lead me to scripture, Lord. What what book should I open? What chapter should I read? Is my answer in there? And then number four, which I almost forgot, line up to what he told you to or not to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs>